Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at GDP and economic growth, uses of economic growth, and then we'll be finishing off with a summary. So we know that gross domestic product, otherwise known as GDP, is the sum of the value of all goods and services produced in a country within a year. So what we'll be doing to calculate GDP is just adding up the value of everything, so the price times the quantity of all the goods and services that we have in the economy, and there's a lot more than the ones that we have here in these pictures, such as education, research and development, it goes a lot further than this. And let's imagine that a country can produce more goods and services after one year. So we've gone from producing this many goods to now doubling the number of goods that we can produce. So now we have a significantly larger amount of goods and services that the economy is now producing. And therefore, we can say that the economy has grown as the country can produce more goods and services. So economic growth can therefore be calculated using our GDP figures. So if we're looking to calculate how much our economy can produce, then we use our GDP, calculate GDP in one year, and then calculate GDP in the next year, compare the numbers and observe what our growth level is. So quite simply, the intuition behind this is that we are looking to measure economic growth. The definition of economic growth is how much we can produce and if we've produced more of it. And our definition for how much an economy can produce is GDP. And therefore, we can see how they overlap each other and we can use GDP as our measurement of unit when it comes to calculating economic growth. So let's imagine that the GDP of a country increases from one year to the next. And we can calculate the percentage change in GDP, and this is also known as the growth rate. So let's remind ourselves of what our percentage change equation is, and it's this. So our percentage change is going to be new figure minus old figure divided by the old figure times by 100. So let's compare two different GDP figures, and let's say in year one, our GDP is 1 billion, and then in year two, our GDP is going to be 1.4 billion. So now let's calculate the percentage change for these GDP figures, and then we will be able to have our level of economic growth. So we are going to do our percentage change equation. So that's going to be the new figure, 1.4 billion, minus our old figure of 1 billion. And we're going to divide that by our old figure as well. And then we will times this by 100. And that's going to give us our percentage change, which is equal to to 40 percent so it's a positive it's a positive number so positive 40 percent means that there is economic growth so our economic growth is 40 percent so now that we've realized that we can calculate economic growth from our gdp figures so in a sense we have our economic growth which is going to be the same as our change in gdp now the two things that we have to realize about these two different figures is that they have different time series. So for example, our GDP or economic growth, we're going to observe that annually. So the economic growth figure is going to be a snapshot in time. However, when we're looking at change in GDP, that's going to be a figure over time. So we're going to be looking at that figure in a year. And we can use those economic growth figures to compare growth across time. So one thing that we've realized at this point is that our GDP has gone up over time. So as time goes by, our economy grows. So for example, we can find the growth rate of the UK between 2000 and 2001. So let's say that our GDP in 2000 is 1 trillion. And then our GDP in 2001 is 1.1 trillion. So now let's calculate the percentage change of this. So it's new figure of 1.1 trillion minus our old figure, which is 1 trillion, divided by our old figure of 1 trillion times by 100. And therefore, that's going to be equal to 10%. So that figure is our growth rate from 2000 to 2001. So we can see that it's from year to year for our growth rate. And therefore, we would conclude that our GDP increase is 10% in the UK. 
which translates to a economy or the UK economy growing by 10%. So we have produced 10% more goods and services. Therefore, the economy has grown by that measure as well. So in effect, what this growth rate is showing us is just simply saying how much the economy has grown over time, specifically that time being from 2000 to 2001. But we could look at the economic growth rate from 2000 to 2002, and that's shown us our economic growth rate in that time series. So we can actually use our economic growth rates for countries in the same period. So we can calculate the economic growth rate in 2012 of the UK, and let's say it's 1.5%. And then in the USA, we can compare it in the same year in 2012. And let's say it's 2.5%. So therefore, we are able to look at the growth in the UK and the growth in the USA at the same time. This means that we can also compare the economic growth in different countries. So in the UK, when it was 1.5%, it is lower than our economic growth rate in the USA of 2.5%. And making these direct comparisons can be quite useful. So our economic growth can help economists understand both the growth of a country over time and the growth of a country compared to other countries. Now, economists that are interested in economic growth, they're going to be particularly interested in this comparison between two countries, especially when they're looking at investment across different countries. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're looking for an amazing A-level economics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face and together, let's make A-level economics a walk in the park.